All right, you may be seated. We want to welcome everybody to the 49th commencement here at Athens Christian School. What a fantastic night. One that nobody's going to forget, right? So we're glad you're here, and we're here to celebrate these seniors and the great job that they've done and uh, send them off to uh, their next path in life. So we're looking forward tonight. We're going to ask our spiritual life director, Mr. Aaron Gibbs, to come and lead us in prayer. And then after that, we will have the national anthem. Good evening. Let's pray. God, we just thank you that before any of these seniors was ever born, you dreamed them up. And you love them before they were ever born. And so, God, we just thank you for bringing them to this place today. God, we thank you for every, every parent, every grandparent, every loved one that has supported them up to this point, God. And, uh, Lord, we just want to celebrate them and all that they've accomplished and all that um, they're going to do, Lord, all they're going to accomplish. So, God, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We pray your special uh, blessing, Lord. We pray a filling of your Holy Spirit, even on this final day of, of their presence at ACS. God, we ask that your spirit would fill them so that they can become kingdom leaders and, and love you all of their days. So, God, we just thank you for this night, Lord. We pray that each of these students would feel honored and celebrated, and they would know that they are loved by you and loved by us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, if everyone would stand at this time, gentlemen, please remove your hats and let's have the playing of the national anthem by our ACS Ensemble Band. There's nothing like a uh, graduation outside under the lights. We've done this uh, at Athens Christian for many, many years, so we're thankful that we were able to do it again tonight, and we're looking forward to, to a great night. I do want to just let you know that in the unlikely event that we do have rain come back over us, we do have a backup plan. So the Drama Center is completely set up for graduation as well. Uh, Lord willing, we're going to be staying out here. Uh, but, it, but again, if we do have rain, if you can just proceed orderly uh, toward the Drama Center, and we will uh, finish up the ceremonies in here and there. But Lord willing, we're going to finish them out here. All right, God's given us another wonderful night for a wonderful event, a celebration of so much that has been accomplished and hopeful anticipation of the great things that will be accomplished in the futures of these young men and women. Let me start by saying that on behalf of the faculty and staff of Athens Christian School, we welcome all of you, grandparents, friends, relatives, our board of directors, and especially you parents, to our 2022 graduation ceremony. You have invested so much into the lives of your children. You brought them into the world, you clothed them, you fed them, you nurtured them, and you sacrificed to give them a Christian education. You've made a significant investment in your children, and we have no doubt that your investment 
is going to pay dividends as these very talented seniors move forward into the path that God has planned for their lives. Thank you for the trust that you put in ACS to educate your most wonderful children. All right, now let's turn to the scripture lesson for tonight, which I have entitled Standing for Truth. You know, I've talked to a lot of people lately who are concerned about the direction of our country. They bring up a lot of issues that we're having right now in our country that in some ways we're losing our way. That up is down and down is up. But when I have these conversations, I say to my friends that the encouraging thing is that people are standing up for what is true. People are standing up against some of the craziness that we see around us. And so tonight, we want to encourage our seniors to do that same thing. When I was young, my dad taught me an old saying, a saying that stands as a truth for life. And the saying goes like this, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And so tonight, as we bid our wonderful seniors a fond farewell, I wanted them, I wanted to challenge them to stand for something so that you don't fall for anything. But not only that we stand for something, we want to challenge them to stand for truth. That is a process that is becoming harder and harder in today's culture. Our scripture text comes from two passages in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 6, 13 and 14 says this. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. And from Ephesians 6, 11 and 13, which says this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Throughout the entirety of Scripture, God has looked for those who would stand for truth, those who would stand for righteousness, those who would stand for His name. Early on in the history of mankind, God chose Noah to stand against the scoffers. To stand against those who said there was no God. To stand against those who mocked the building of the ark that God had commanded Noah to build. Later, God chose Moses to stand against Pharaoh, the most powerful ruler in the world at that time. To stand against the overwhelming military strength of the Egyptian nation to stand at the edge of the Red Sea and hold his staff over the water to watch the seas part as the Israelites passed on dry land. And then to watch the seas roll, roll back to consume Pharaoh's great army. He also chose a young shepherd boy to stand in the face of a great giant, to go out and meet the mighty Goliath with only five stones and a sling to stand victorious over the giant who was brought to the ground with a stone that had been directed by God with deadly force to a vulnerable spot in Goliath's temple where no armor was present. Remember this, God has always stood with those who are willing to stand. As graduates, you are now entering a new phase of life, a new beginning. You're entering a phase of life where you will be challenged about your beliefs. You will be asked to give reasons why you believe what you say you believe. You will be forced to take a stand for something. Our hope as the faculty of Athens Christian School and as your parents and grandparents and as your pastors and your youth leaders and other influential individuals in your lives our hope is that you will stand for truth, biblical truth, for absolute truth, for truth that comes from scripture, for truth 
that comes directly from God. As we exhort you with the words from 1 Corinthians and Ephesians to stand fast in the faith, to be brave and to be strong, what truths must be defended? What truths must be written in your hearts? What truths are worth standing for? Tonight I want to give you three simple but eternally important truths for which we hope you will stand. If you do not stand for these truths, then certainly you may fall for anything. The first absolute and eternally important truth is that God is real. And one day in the future, He will come to judge both the living and the dead. How do we know this is true? Well, we're told this over and over in Scripture. In 2 Tim Timothy 4, Paul tells us that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will judge the living and the dead at His appearing. In Hebrews, we are told that Jesus is not only the mediator of the new covenant, but God is the judge of all. In Romans 2, Paul says this, A day will come when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ. But you will be challenged. Is God real? Indeed, many have questioned God's existence. In the 1600s, a famous French mathematician and philosopher named Pascal came up with an interesting but misleading way of deciding whether to believe whether God really exists. His theory was called Pascal's Wager, and it went something like this. You must wager on whether God exists. Every person will make that wager. So every person will either wager that God exists or that God doesn't exist. So Pascal concluded that people should wager that God does exist, but for the wrong reason. Pascal concluded that some people should wager that God exists because if you wager that he does exist, there is little risk and great possible gain. In other words, if you wager that God exists and you're right, you have eternal gain. And if you're wrong, that God does not exist, you have lost little. On the other hand, if you wager that God does not exist and you're wrong, then you risk eternal loss. Pascal's wager is misleading. It's misleading because it basically says that salvation is a wager. Pascal's wager is misleading because it says that God is only a possibility, that he may or may not exist. Pascal's wager is misleading because it says if you wager that he does exist, then you will have eternal life. But God's existence and eternal life are not based on a wager. Instead, God's existence and eternal life are based on the truth of Scripture, which says that God sent His Son to die on a cross, that His blood covers the sins of believers, and that salvation comes through faith, which is the gift of God. As confirmed in John 5, 1, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. Those who only wager that He is the Christ are not true believers. So as you go from these halls of Athens Christian and as you are challenged on what you believe, may you have a saving faith that God is real, not simply a possibility, and that He will come to judge both the living and the dead. Those who have a saving faith will reap eternal life. Those who have only made a wager on the possibility of God's existence will be judged to eternal separation from God. Please know that the existence of God and the certainty of His judgment are grounded in truth and not on a wager. The second absolute and eternally important truth is this. The Bible is God's infallible and inerrant Word and it contains no errors. When you leave here, you may be told that the Bible is not true. You may be told that the Bible contains errors. You may be told that the great miracles of the Bible are only figurative stories 
that have been borrowed from other religions. You may be told that you're wrong to base your beliefs in eternal standing on a book that was written by men who are fallible just like you are. How do you counter these possible arguments? How will you stand for the truth that the Bible is God's inerrant and infallible word? The argument against these false statements that you are going to be faced with is that the word of God was divinely, divinely inspired by God. In fact, it was literally breathed out by God into the minds and the hearts and the hands of the authors of Scripture. God is the source and the ultimate author of Scripture, and every word in Scripture came directly from God. The authority for the inerrancy of Scripture comes directly from God Himself in 2 Timothy 3.16. He tells us that all Scripture is inspired. In other words, it is God-breathed coming directly from God. Though written by human authors, it nevertheless is spoken into the minds of the authors by God himself, and for that reason, carries the full weight of his authority. I would encourage you to dig deeply into Scripture and learn what it says. I know that you've been challenged to do that in your years here at Athens Christian. And the third absolute and eternally important truth is this. God has given us his moral absolutes. Please hear this. Man does not create moral absolutes. The moral absolutes or the moral laws, they're found in the Ten Commandments. God gave these to Moses at Mount Sinai, and although we are no longer under the judgment of the law, God commands his followers to adhere to the moral law because this is pleasing to him. So what are the moral absolutes? Well, there are ten of them. We're to have no other gods before the one true God. We are not to worship idols. We are not to take the Lord's name in vain. We are to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We are to honor our mothers and fathers. This is the only commandment that carries a promise with it. And that promise is that you will live long on the earth. We are not to murder, we are not to commit adultery, we are not to steal, we are not to bear false witness against our neighbors, and we are not to, co to covet. These are the moral absolutes that should govern your life. But please know that man will try and create his own moral absolutes. We, we see it every day. Man has and will call murder a choice. We were reminded of this in a film, in a moving documentary that was prepared by one of our own alumni, Ms. Lindsay Reynolds. It's called Purpose, and I would encourage you to find it on YouTube and watch it. You will be impacted. Man will call natural what God has called unnatural. Man will call normal what we know is not normal. So I encourage you to be bound and to be based in your moral absolutes on what you know from the truth of Scripture and that you'll follow that throughout your life. Class of 2022, these are perilous times. We need young men and women who will stand for the truth. We need young men and women who will stand for the truth that God is real and that he will come to judge the living and the dead. We need young men and women who will stand for the truth that scripture is God's inerrant and infallible word. And we need young men and women who will stand for the truth that God is the one who sets the moral absolutes. Man does not set those. And as twisted as our culture is, and may become, we need young leaders who will stand for those moral absolutes that have been established by God and reject the false teachings that our culture would say is truth. We believe you can and will do this with the power of God's Holy Spirit working through you. 
So as I close, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his face on you. And may he grant you the strength and the boldness to be true witnesses for him and to proclaim his word all the days of your lives. Thank you. Mr. Cummings, on behalf of the ACS high school faculty, it is my privilege to present the Athens Christian School class of 2022. At this time, we would like to welcome to the platform Olivia Laymans. Olivia is this year's star student, star student and having the highest SAT score, and she nominated her star teacher, Mrs. Debbie Bryant. Olivia is this year's salutatorian with the second highest academic average. Please welcome Olivia Laymans. I want to start by welcoming and thanking everyone who traveled to be here today and honor us graduates. It's my privilege to welcome guests from around the country and around the world. Today we have guests joining us from Alabama, California, Florida, Illinois, Kentucky, Maryland, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Brazil. Everyone on campus today is gathered to celebrate the lives of the graduates, where we've been and where we are going. But before I speak, I want my classmates to take a moment to look at the person sitting next to you. The thing is, we will probably never be like this again. So look at your friends and your family and your teachers and your coaches, at all these people who have poured into you and supported you up until this moment, and take a second to appreciate them. Now, the senior quote that I chose to put in the yearbook was, this is the part where you find out who you are, a song lyric that I picked because it's so fitting for this phase of our lives. When you are younger, your parents, teachers, and friends that surround you every day really influence you. All of these people help build the solid foundation of our lives, but now it's time to figure things out for ourselves. When you graduate, you have the freedom to grow in a way that you didn't before and figure out who you really are without others' opinions and expectations affecting you as much. Parents, it is time for you all to trust that you have taught us well and let us prove ourselves and make you proud. Teachers. There are so many of y'all that have invested in me in the nine years that I have been here. Some students in my class have been here even longer than that, and you guys have seen us grow up. Thank you for teaching, encouraging, inspiring, and loving us, even when we were difficult, and even when you were off the clock. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10 says, We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. To my classmates, some adults critique our generation by saying that technology and popular culture have had terrible influences on us, but I want to both encourage and challenge y'all today. I really believe that our generation is an instrument of good in this world. Like the verse has said, there are many forces working against us, but we know that the life of Jesus is manifest in us. Our families, with the support of the school, have instilled in us the faith that keeps us grounded. Many of you may not know exactly what you want to do yet, and that's okay. Life's education is a long journey, and all journeys you must take breaks. Don't be discouraged, because you can always achieve your goals, even if that doesn't include college, or if there are gaps in between. Lastly, I read somewhere that you are only a teenager for 2,555 days. If you love someone, tell them. If you want to fight for change, go and do it. If you feel like crying, that's okay, because time goes by fast, and you must seize every opportunity to create the life that you want to live.
Thank you, Olivia. Um, Athens Christian School has a long-standing tradition of not bringing in graduation speakers. Instead, we believe that the most important people we can hear from tonight is our seniors. There are four students tonight that will be sharing their story with us all, and we're so excited to hear from them tonight. They'll be speaking in this order. Caleb Williams, Lydia Fortson, Jack Todd, and Grace Milford. Starting tonight with Caleb Williams. Good evening, and thank you for being here to celebrate this senior class. As I even begin to think about my time at ACS, I think of the phrase, but God. Growing up, I've always loved athletics. From the beginning, football and baseball were my two favorites. As I got into high school, I turned most of my focus to football, which kind of took the lead. A year or two in, and college talk started. I always knew I wanted to compete collegiately, but now it was becoming a reality. I was thinking that I would play college football, but God had a different plan for my life. I had several career-threatening injuries, the last being a torn ACL my senior year. All I could think was, why me, God? At that moment, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see God's plan just yet. Several weeks later, I was sitting in Mr. Meek's first period pre-calculus class. Every morning, he gives a small devotion before class. That day, his devotion was about trusting God and trusting that he had a plan for your life. That's where my view began to change. Looking back now, I know that playing college football was not God's plan. He was leading me in a different direction. I have signed with True McConnell University to play baseball and plan to get a degree in business with a minor in youth ministry. I want to let other teenagers know that God loves them, that he cares about every aspect of their lives, and that he has a plan. We just have to trust him. The tough things we go through in life teach us to be the people God wants us to be and directs us to the places he wants to go. Tonight, I want to first thank the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, guidance, and blessings on my life. I want to thank my parents and my family who love me and teach me the ways of the Lord and cheer me on. I want to thank my teachers and fellow classmates here at ACS. Teachers, you have invested in my life spiritually and academically. You have played a huge role in me getting to this graduation ceremony and following God's will for my life. The class of 2022, I pray that we will never forget God. I pray that we will never forget the awesome things he has done for our lives. Never forget that God has a plan for our lives. It's our job to listen to him and then do what he says. One day, we will look back on our lives and see but God. everyone. On behalf of the class of 2022, we appreciate your presence as we celebrate this accomplishment in our lives. Before I begin, I want to thank my parents for being with me every step of the way. My dad has taught me to remain confident and never let any opportunity pass by that may come my way, while my mom has taught me to always be kind and be a good friend to those who need it. They each have instilled in me to follow the Lord with all my heart. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you when I say that I had no idea what to talk about when writing this speech. Not because I have no words, but because I have so many. I could never thank my parents, classmates, teachers, coaches, and the Lord enough for the love and support on this 13-year-long journey. So, in contemplating different ideas and topics, I decided to break it down into a simple question. What does Athens Christian School mean to you? What does ACS mean to me? 
Well, my family has been familiar with ACS for a while now. In fact, this year is the 50th year my family has been involved here. But that's besides the point. I remember walking into kindergarten on the first day of school and immediately feeling comforted by the warm atmosphere here. Growing up here, there was always something comforting in knowing that on Monday morning, I would still walk through the doors of ACS and sit at my desk. There have been classmates and teachers who have been a comforting presence and have literally been a shoulder to cry on. This school has been my second home, but it might actually be my first home because I'm here more than my house. Secondly, I am thankful for my teachers and coaches as they have taught me countless life lessons and have led by example. Ms. White has shown me how to give grace to others when it's hard. Ms. Connor has taught me to let loose and never forget to laugh and have fun. Coach Cummings and Coach Kayla have taught me to work hard and never make excuses, even if it's running mile repeats in 90 degree weather in the middle of August. Mr. Gibbs has shown me that standing up for what you believe in is not easy, but it's required in order to be a leader. Mr. Meeks has shown me to never waste an opportunity to share the gospel. Ms. Henson has taught me to be a listener for those who need it. Seeing Ms. Hunt sing, singing praises to the Lord while walking to class has shown me to always find joy in the Lord in everything I do. Ms. Mitchell has taught me to always smile, especially when giving tours. And Ms. Herring has taught me to always be willing to serve. Do you notice how a lot of these lessons weren't taught in the classroom? That's because ACS is more than that. Yes, I have learned how to balance an equation, and I can probably recite the script of Romeo and Juliet at this point. But I take away so much more than that. The teachers here at Athens Christian have invested in each of our lives in their own unique ways. Last, but certainly not least, I've experienced God's love, forgiveness, and, forgiveness, and graciousness. I remember sitting in Ms. Blackman's Bible class in eighth grade, and something finally clicked when I realized, wow, God really does love me. From K-5 to 12th grade, each teacher and coach I have had has poured into me and shown me that life is more than just athletics or academics or fine arts, but it's about keeping God at the center of everything you do. I also asked a few fellow seniors what ACS means to them. One said, a godly place where I grew up with friends and had lots of fun. Another said, the Philly cheesesteaks here are really good. Another said, ACS gave me an opportunity to share my talents and abilities with others. The beauty of God is that he speaks to and connects with us all in our different personal ways, even if it is through a Philly cheesesteak. Because of Athens Christian's guidance and opportunities that I have had the chance of pursuing, I have been chosen to pursue more opportunities in the future. I have been chosen to participate in the Global Youth Leadership Academy, an organization based in Colorado, along with 49 other students across the country to travel to Greece this summer, where we will be taught leadership and influence skills. This is something I have prayed about for three years now, and the opportunity has come up in perfect timing. After that, I will be attending UNG in Dahlonega to study business and get involved in different areas up there. God is revealing his plan for me one step at a time. To the class of 2022, thank you from the bottom of my heart for making life so fun, and I have thoroughly enjoyed making memories with you. As we close this chapter in our lives, I pray you continue to trust in the Lord and seek Him in everything you do for the rest of your lives. Thank you. Hello everyone, <laughs> my name is Jack Todd and I want to thank everyone for coming to the graduation of the class of 2022. I can't believe I'm up on this stage giving a graduation speech. To be honest, I never really thought I would be here. Graduation always seems so far off, but here we are, so I guess I made it. I want to congratulate all of the seniors. We have finally graduated and now we have more school to do. I want to thank my parents and family. Thanks mom and dad for always supporting me 
in everything I did. From being at every sporting event to proofreading my English papers at 12 o'clock every Sunday night. Y'all are amazing, and I would literally not here, be here without you, and y'all developed my character, so I wouldn't be here without you either. Thank you, ACS. You have given me so many memories that I will not forget. Thank you to Mr. Meeks for sharing God's word every day and being a light in people's lives. You are the definition of kindness, and I hope one day I can be as great of a man as you are. Thank you to Mr. Gibbs for investing in me spiritually and teaching me how to be a leader. I also want to thank Mr. Crawford. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to showcase my musical talent in ninth grade algebra two while singing the quadratic formula with three other fine gentlemen. You said we were the second coming of Gladys Knight and the Pips. Thank you also for putting up with my foolishness, especially this year. You know what I mean. I, I want to also thank the senior class. You have given me so many memories, and all of you have impacted me in a special way. From playing Mafia in Mr. Reynolds' ninth grade biology class, to doing online school in 10th grade, and then being quarantined multiple times again in 11th grade, we have had a very unusual path to graduation. But we are finally here. If I want to leave y'all with one thing, I want to say this. We hear about God a lot at this school, what he has done for us, and I know it's very easy to tune that out. So, if y'all listen to anything I just said, I want y'all to hear this. God has something special for each and every one of us. Ephesians 3.20 says this, that God is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think because of his power working within us. Just think about that for a minute. All that you have planned, God has something far better, something better than you could ever think of or ever imagine. If you want this abundant life in Christ, all you have to say is yes to him. Even when we think life is too big or the weight of the world is too heavy on our backs, just say yes. We are called to be the salt and light of the earth. So say yes to God and go bring the light of God to a world living in darkness. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Grace Milford, for those of you who don't know me. So I would like to start off by saying that I've grown up hearing people say, don't grow up, or stay in school as long as you can, or adulthood is not fun. And being the kid I was, I always try to take that advice to heart. But seeing as today is the day that we're all officially growing up, it didn't work. So as much as no one wants to grow up, I'm ready for the next chapter in my life. Philippians 3.13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, I'm not saying that I have it all together or that I have it made, but reaching out for Christ in my journey, I think I'll do okay. So having said all that, I want to thank the people who have helped me realize that growing up didn't have to be no fun, my family. My dad for always pushing me to do better in everything I do, for never letting me quit, and for staying up until 10 working on math problems that neither one of us knew how to do. My mom for always encouraging me, for loving me for who I am, and always being my friend when I need one. My brother for helping me to realize that it's not always about me, and for being my best friend and making me laugh whenever I need him to. To my amazing grandparents and wonderful great-grandmother for pouring wisdom and fun into my life and being the support system that I need. My aunts and uncles and cousins for being part of the village that raised me. I love you all. Thank you to all my teachers. I remember the teacher who made an impact on me as soon as I got to ACS, who strengthened me as a person and a Christian, was Miss Weatherly. 
She was always making me laugh, telling me to spit out my chewing gum, and reminding me to get to class on time. I'm so thankful for the years I got to spend with her, and I know she's in a better place now. Moving away from that, I've had the opportunity to be the second generation of Milfords here at ACS. From Mrs. Beecham calling me my Aunt Danielle's name, and Mr. Crawford, Mr. Beecham, and Mr. Bamford talking about my dad back in high school. And all I have to say is, God has given you all great patience. <laughs> but aside from that, I'm incredibly thankful for all the teachers I've had. Some of you more than once, which has allowed me to make connections and spend time with each of you. Coach Kemp, thanks for always sticking with me when I can't tell my left leg from my right leg and for being a good coach. To my friends, while we may not be considered wise just yet, we have questioned, encouraged, and challenged each other as Proverbs 27:17 says, iron sharpens iron. I have enjoyed every moment with you all and will miss seeing you after it's all said and done. I'll never forget the memories we make here. And P.S., you all have to buy your own gum now. When I first came to ACS, I didn't realize how important it was that the people here are constantly pouring God's word and praying for us. But as I've gotten older, it has become significant to me that there are always teachers and staff here reminding you of God's grace and mercy. I am so thankful for the opportunity to come to this school and grow my faith. I am going into the real world with a foundation in Jesus Christ and the word of God that gives me hope that no matter what happens in life, I have that relationship with the Lord. I want to say one final thing to the seniors before we graduate and leave this place. God is good. No matter the ups and downs of life ahead, the plans that we make that might not go how we imagine, lean on Him. If I have learned anything from my time in high school, it is that life doesn't always go how we want it to, and it's not easy. But if you have the creator of the world on your side, what can go wrong? To close, I want to leave you with some words from the song, So Will I, and it says, To the God of creation, if the wind goes where you send it, so will I. Thank you. It's amazing to get to hear from our students. Thank you, each one of you who shared with us tonight. We do have the privilege to hear from one more senior tonight. It's my privilege to introduce to you the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Miss Karen Palma. Karen was recognized this year as the positive athlete. Karen finished with an overall grade average of 97.15 and a GPA in excess of 4.0. She will be attending Piedmont University in the fall, majoring in nursing. Karen hopes to become a pediatric nurse with the goal of ultimately becoming a nurse practitioner. Our valedictorian, Karen Palm. Good evening, fellow students, family, friends, faculty, and a special good evening to the Athens Christian graduating class of 2022. We made it. It's crazy to think that our time here at ACS has flown by this fast. I still remember my first day of kindergarten, being greeted by Mrs. Hakama, and then being introduced to the people that I would grow close to for the next 13 years of my life. I think it's special to grow up with the same people for so many years and be close with one another. It has been a privilege to see each and every one of my classmates growing to the man and woman that they are today. They are all so different and special, all created with specific talents and with their own life purpose. I couldn't have asked for a better group of people to grow up, experience life, and graduate with. I genuinely am grateful for you all and for making elementary, middle, and high school memorable. There are too many memories and so many of y'all that have played a part in my life, so I'm gonna try and keep it short. I want to thank all my track and cross country teammates Joanna, Jacoris, Andrew, Ashton, Dawson, Abby Arnold, Lydia, and all the middle schoolers who I run with, and of course, Travin. All the memories from Duckle Island and Pinder Forge and track meets made high school for me, so thank you. I want to thank Peter, Katie Griffin, and Josiah for making Latin class fun. Not that learning a dead language isn't fun, Mr. Bamford. Thank you, Jack, Adam, Ollie, and y'all's friend group for always being able to make our class laugh. I also want to thank Rachel, Abby Marshman, Caleb, Vince, Como and Bailey's for their friendship to me throughout these years. 
I especially want to thank Olivia for sticking with me since sixth grade. I'm going to miss seeing you every day. I want to thank Coach TC, Coach Fowler, and Coach Kayla. I know how to work hard because of their coaching, reminding myself you reap what you sow and that every breath and step is from him, so everything we do should be for him. I want to thank every single one of my teachers that I've had since K-5 all the way through senior year. Each and every one of you have all cared about me and poured into me in ways you will never know. I would like to thank my parents for everything that they have done for me. They have supported me all these years. My mom has always encouraged me to first seek the kingdom of God. In second grade, she told me how to get good grades. First was to do my part and study. And second was to pray to God before every test and quiz and he'll help you. And that's what I've done since. My dad has always encouraged me to do my best and to enjoy my life. He always told me, echale ganas, which means give it all you got. They are some of the most hardworking people I know, and I hope that I can be as hard of a worker as they are. They instilled in me the importance of a good education, and for that I am grateful. And I thank God for choosing them as my parents. Looking back, I can see the Lord's faithfulness to me throughout all these years at ACS. He has been so good to me. He has never let me down and has fulfilled every desire in my heart. He has blessed me tremendously in every area of my life, academically, athletically, and with the teachers, coaches, friends, and family he has placed in my life. So in return, out of a heart of gratefulness, everything that I do, I want to do for his honor and glory and point back to him. I'm not up here today because of my own strength or my own intelligence. I'm up here today humbly because of Jesus. I strive to do my best in everything I do because that is what he calls me to do. Loving others, being kind, extending grace, having perseverance, patience, depending on him, and not quitting are things that he has worked in my life throughout my time here at ACS. Two verses that have been my life verses are Psalms 37.4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart in Psalms 121.1-2. I lift my eyes toward the mountains, where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My last encouragement for the graduating class of 2022 is that you would commit your life in the Lord's hands, that wherever he leads, you would follow. Know that God's plan for your life is far better than what you may have for yourself. I pray that the things of this world would leave you unsatisfied in the light of who God is. There is nothing that this world can offer you and nothing you can leave behind that Jesus doesn't offer something better. There is nothing that compares to the joy that comes with walking with Jesus daily. So wherever you go and whatever career you have, that you would use the gifts and talents that God has given you to glorify him. And as Ecclesiastes 11.9 says, young people, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do whatever you want to do, take it all in, but remember that you must give an account to God for everything you do. Thank you. You're an amazing group of seniors, and last night we had the opportunity to honor the class of 2022 as individuals at our Senior Faithfulness Banquet. What a great class we are graduating. They're diverse in their abilities, talented in their activities, motivated in their academics, and decorated for their achievements. They have learned much. They have learned how to give back. Tonight, we celebrate you as a class. We had state tournament appearances in football, cross country, basketball, wrestling, track, who won their region. The drama department just wrapped up a spring musical of Oliver with great contributions from this senior class. We have three graduates signed to compete in college sports next year. Ladies and gentlemen, your program denotes the honor graduates with an asterisk. They are wearing a gold sash students who completed their high school studies with a 3.5 GPA or higher and pursued an advanced course of study. They graduated with honors. Students graduating with honors, please stand. You can have a seat. 
In addition, seven students this year have completed their high school course of study with a 4.0 GPA or higher. This is an amazing accomplishment and we are so proud of those students who met this incredible goal. Your program also indicates the longevity of several students. I want to invite you to take a look at the program. These students have been at ACS since first grade, K-5, K-4, or K-3. That's 12, 13, 14, or 15 years. Let's give these group of students and their parents a huge round of applause for the sacrifice and investment. We're almost there. It's about that time. Mr. Cummings will be handing out a few plaques this evening for students that were not able to attend the awards banquet last night. And we have a special gift that we're going to give to each graduate as we walk across the stage. Seniors, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness, your leadership. We appreciate all you have done. Congratulations for what you're about to get to do. Now at this time, I present the class of 2022 to receive their diplomas. I certify that these students have met the requirements for graduation set forth by the state of Georgia and Athens Christian School. Gentlemen, replace your hats. Row one, you may stand. Grace Michelle Akers. Vincent Gabriel Araujo. Abby Gail Arnold. Thank you. Dawson Terrell Osborne. Jacob Manley Bonner. Molly Ann Brown. Ryan Scott Childers. Thank you. <laughs> Joanna Alejandra Colon Rodriguez. Jasmine Dominique Colquitt. <laughs> John Ez Aladdin Davis. Lydia Deanne Fordson.
Joshua Yair Fuentes. Caitlin Brooks Griffin. Farron Avery Hicks. Olivia Grace Layman. Rachel Ariana Lopez. Peter Clifton Lovell. Thank you, sir. Abigail Grace Marchman. Ellie Christine McLean. <laughs> Katie McElhannon. Grace Renee Milford. <laughs> Ali Roddy Nabolsi. On then when <laughs> Karen Hadassa Palma. Jacob Michael Pintar. Molina Pearl Ruiz. Adam Riley Schumann. Yeah. 
Jacoris Jabez Smith. Jeremiah Taija Smith. Rachel Amanda Leah Smith. Josiah Noah Staley. <laughs> Jack Stevens Todd. Ashley Taylor Townsend. Ashton Jace Trawick. Como Wong. <laughs> Ruachi Wong. Andrew Wells the third. <laughs> Caleb David Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 2022 graduates of Athens Christian School. <laughs> graduates, please stand. You may now turn your tassel. At this time, we would like to invite everyone to please stand as the Athens Christian School Ensemble leads us in the alma mater.
All right, and now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Go see your graduates.